How's it going guys, you're watching Rowdy XSC and today we're going to be talking about something very near and dear to my heart and that is PC water cooling. Now the purpose of this video is it's going to be one of many that I'm putting into a series basically just as an introduction into custom water cooling all the way from the basic beginner, I don't have a clue what I'm doing vibes, all the way up to the more advanced stuff. So yeah, if it's something that is going to be helpful to you or if you just want to come along for the ride then stay tuned and we'll get to it. Okay, so for context, this video is gonna be just about water blocks, but the very basics. So obviously this kind of stuff, like if you already know, then you'll know that at the beginning of trying to work all this out, it can be really confusing, especially this day and age, as there is so much on the market um, and it can be quite overwhelming. So the whole point of this video is just to simplify it for the very first beginner, first time setting up a custom loop um, and basically what to be looking for in a water block, well for your first water block. Um, so sort of what fits what, how it fits, how to know what fits what that kind of stuff so yeah if um like i say if if there's more advanced stuff that you need to know that i haven't quite covered in this video by all means leave me a message down in the comments and i will be happy to help in any way that i can so let's start with the most common question asked when it comes to custom pc water cooling why not use an all-in-one cooler now all-in-one coolers they serve an absolute purpose and they are good without a doubt like i say they are in my opinion a big step up from air cooling um, at least on the the more moderate level air cooling um, but there is some drawbacks in comparison to custom pc water cooling so the first one that i will go through is this is an aio all-in-one cooler now Cosmetically, I don't think they're that attractive, first of all. So if you've gone and spent a lot of money on a PC, you bought a really fancy case, you've got a really fancy motherboard, and then you've got an AIO. There are some good looking, better looking ones than this. This is just, um, this is a, actually a hybrid cooler off a, a 2080 Ti Kingpin, but the, the premise is very much the same. Um, but yeah, you've gone to all that extent to make your PC look nice and pretty, and then you've got this kind of vibe going on. Uh, and I don't think that looks that good personally. Um, and the reason that this can kind of draw back is because the tube length when you buy an AIO is very much just one length. It is the length that you get. You can't trim that down to, to make it snug in your case. And obviously the order always has to be the radiator above the pump. So you've got to be quite creative to make that look good. The other drawbacks from more of a performance level is yet again, what you get out of the box is all you will ever be able to get. You can put more powerful fans on there, um, but in all honesty, in the grand scheme of things, major airflow for a radiator doesn't really help you as far as it goes for giving you major gains in performance. Um, the biggest way to upgrade your performance is you know, sort of bigger radiators, maximizing the efficiency of a radiator, um, and then, you know, upgrading pump gear and better flow. Flow, that's a bit more technical for a different video, but um, there's lots of different things where we have custom PC water cooling versus AIOs, you get more flexibility and more fine tuning. Um, also, it's uh, it just looks cooler. Like I, I'm not a fan of the look of AIOs and I much prefer the look of custom PC water cooling and you just get far more out of it achievement wise. So this is very much a video for the more enthusiast level people that are into, you know, building their PCs from scratch and going that extra sort of mile, providing the funds allow us. This is not a cheap hobby. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just to answer that question, all in one callers. But I will say this for anyone using AIO, if you're just using it for gaming and basic use, um, as in you're not overclocking, you're not looking to push everything to the very, very limit, AIOs are the cheapest and simplest ways to go. So I will not dispute that, but this video is, well, this series is just about custom water cooling, is that really is what's important to me. Right, so let's keep this video short and sweet and digestible. The first thing when it comes to water blocks is very much knowing about fitments. Now, fitments is dictated by the socket of your motherboard versus the bracket on the cooler. So the way you find out your socket is, if you don't already know, uh, if you go into your motherboard manual, um, that will tell you exactly what socket you're using. So if it's Intel, it'll be LGA, let's just say 1151, uh, 2066, if it's X299, or the new one is um, LGA 1700. Um, AMD is a bit simpler. That is very much, the most common one is just AM4. So 
you need to find that information out first and then this will enable you to get to the next step of then locating a block that will fit your motherboard. Now, once we've got the socket established, so let's just say it is an Intel motherboard and let's just say you have LGA1151. The way that you are gonna shop for a water block is you go on whichever reputable site you're used to using. There's plenty out there um, for water calling in the UK. Um, I, I like to use quite a few different ones, but um, water calling UK, they're a good one to start with. They're pretty much all water calling and it's, uh, they've got a nice selection of stuff. Scan computers, they do quite a few bits, overclockers. Um, there's loads of sites out there, but obviously if anyone has any suggestions for sites they use, just put them down below in the comments and just it gives people more, more information to go on. Um, but yeah, so back to it. So you've got an LGA1151 socket, let's just say that. Um, so when you are looking for your water blocks, you want to be looking for socket compatibility LGA1151. Now you may see LGA1151 and a bunch of other sockets that it fits as well. That is very common, but as long as it specifies your particular socket, then that is going to fit. Now just as an example for the different types of brackets uh, that these will come with, this is an EK Velocity block and this is fitted with an AM4 bracket. So that will fit an AM4 socket. Um, now this particular one, this is worth looking out for. I remember when I bought this uh, some time ago that it actually came with both the Intel bracket and the AM4 bracket. Now it doesn't fit every Intel socket, you still have to look at your particular one, but this did 1151 and quite a few others. I don't think it went all the way up to um, 2066, but um, it did cover quite a range of other sockets. But yeah, a lot, I think quite a few of the EK, um, EK ones do come with two brackets, but like I said, at, on the listing that you're looking at, it will specifically say, the, the, the magic numbers that you're looking for, which in this case, you know, would be AM4 if you're looking for an AMD block, and if you have LGA1151 uh, or 2066, whatever it may be, you just need to be looking for those numbers in the um, sort of compatibility chart below. Now, if the information is not there, just if you find a block that you like, simply ask the suppliers, just send them an email, and they should be able to guide you in the right direction to confirm if the block will fit or not. So that's, um, that's the first thing that you need to know when it comes to water blocks is, is fitting. That is the most important part. Now, the next thing you will see different terminology. So um, sort of nickel, um, full nickel and acetyl and stuff like that. You don't need to pay too much attention to that really at the beginning. Um, not for your first loop, unless you've got a whole load of money to just go wild. Um, there is different performances and gains into different blocks and basically full nickel would be um, very much a solid block so this is this is full nickel so that's just a solid nickel water block acetyl is is basically plastic um, and it'll have a plastic top with a metal cold plate um, you'll get different materials on the cold plate you can have copper nickel um, various different metals the most common one is generally nickel these days um, so yeah don't get too hung up on that at the beginning if you really want to go into it, there is so much that you can read up on, you know, the um, the makeup of blocks and the benefits between, you know, a full nickel versus a settle. In all honesty, in my opinion, I think for basic ambient water cooling, there's not a great deal in it. I've used the settle blocks and I've used full nickel and not really seen a benefit just by having one or the other. Um, the other thing that you will need to look for, though, is different blocks will have um, marginally different flow rates but this only really comes into the more higher end blocks so when you start looking um, in the higher end market they'll be talking more about you know you can you, you can kind of adjust the flow to a degree because there is something called a jet plate which i'm actually i'm, I'm going to explain to you how that works in a moment um, but there is a jet plate and you can swap out different jet plates to increase the flow and decrease the flow yet again if you're just starting out, don't get hung up on that. Like, it's not really that important. You just want to be looking for a good reputable block. Um, and generally, if you're spending anywhere between sort of 40 to 70 pound range, that's going to buy you a nice mid-range block. Um, if you go higher than that, you can go all the way over 200 pound now in water blocks. Um, obviously, that's going to give you a really great performing block, but real world gains, probably you're not gonna see, um, especially if you're just on ambient water cooling. So it very much depends on your budget, but my opinion would be just keep it simple, concentrate on the fit of the block, find a block that you like the look of, one that works for your build, um, and providing it fits, 
just go for it. And you know, this is the beauty to PC water cooling on the customizable level is you can always upgrade down the line, um, but it keeps things simple at the beginning. It, it will all, this hobby for most people, it runs out of control. Like I remember way back when, um, like seeing PC water cooling for the first time and I was just like, what the hell, that guy's putting water in his computer and that just blew my, that premise blew my mind. And you know, you kind of figure that out and how that works. And this is what this video is for to help speed up that sort of notion. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's something that can evolve really, really rapidly and get quite out of control if you get into it. So yeah, but just keep it simple. That is key here, just keep it simple. Know your, your compatibility, know the fitting, know your socket and just find a block that you like. And if you like the look of it and it works in your build and it fits, buy it. Um, now, I'm actually gonna take this a little step further. I'm gonna show you how a water block actually works. So this is a heat killer block. Now, this is made up of two parts. Um, we've got the bottom part of the water block. This is called your cold plate, okay? And if you look on the cold plate, you will see we've got various different fins um, that are grooved into predominantly where this will be sitting on top of the CPU. Now, what happens is the heat that comes off the CPU. So let's just give you an example. This is an old AMD bad boy. You'll have your CPU, you'll have your thermal interface, which will be your thermal paste. That's for a whole number of videos. It's a very subjective um, one to go for, <laughs> let's just say that. Um, so yeah, you'll have your CPU, thermal paste, the block will sit on top like that. And then this will be basically conducting all the heat um, through the um, CPU, so the IHS and the, and the thermal interface. And having all these fins, what that does is that actually increases the surface area of the block. Now, when you increase the surface area of where it is trying to dissipate the heat or contract the heat, um, that is gonna increase the efficiency massively. So that is why that exists. If, if that was just a smooth plate, it wouldn't work half as well as it does. Now, on top, this completes the block. And on this particular, they, they vary block to block, but this is the simplest one to show you. You'll see water comes in, so your coolant goes in, and it will basically run through these fins, and that'll be picking up all the heat that comes off the CPU, and then that'll be expelled through the outlet, which will make its way around the loop into your radiator, where it'll be cooled, and then eventually make its way back to the CPU, and it's got this nice equilibrium of, um, you know, close to as, well, as close to get as ambient temperatures as you can. So it's uh, a very, simple system really um, but that is how water blocks actually work so that's cpus and pretty much the basics with cpus um, now if you wanted to go for sort of a full system call well most full system call as in your cpu and graphics card graphics cards get a little bit more intense so this is a graphics card block, um, and yet again, there's your cold plate. Now, these are a bit more extreme, as they will call, most of the time, they will call the uh, GPU die, they'll do the memory, and they'll do a portion of the VRM. Um, this particular block is off a 2080 Ti Kingpin. This is, de if, you have a 2080, if you have a 2080 Ti Kingpin and you're looking for a watt block, this is definitely not one to start with. This is a bike ski block. Um, which um, is shipped to fit the card, but it doesn't fit the card out of the box. So um, if you're in the market for one of those, um, I would just probably stick with the hybrid cooler for now, to be honest with you, until you upgrade. This is not really a great alternative. It, it's, trying to get hold of the hydro copper version is close to impossible. Um, but sticking to the video, um, these get a bit more intense. So these are the more tricky ones to fit. Um, there is a bit more to know and you've got to be quite comfortable um, taking your GPU apart. Um, most times manufacturers will allow you to do that but you can void warranties. You really have to look into which card you've bought and their terms and conditions for warranties. Um, a lot of them now are kind of over that and they allow you to repaste and if you're allowed to repaste then you can run a water block with no problem. Um, now shopping for these if you have, let's just say, an EVGA 3080 Ti, um, you want to be looking for EVGA 30, 3080 Ti water block. Um, and they're a bit more specific. Now, the only times that it sort of runs away a little bit is if you have a reference style card. So 
Reference design is basically what's shipped directly from NVIDIA. So the PCB is as they laid it all out and it's a reference design. So you'll find a lot of them, a lot of blocks, EK blocks specifically, when you look for those, they'll just say uh, compatibility reference card. Um, so if you have a reference design, which you should be able to find that out through the manual. If not, just go online, type in whichever manufacturer card you have um, and it will tell you whether it's a reference or whether it's not. Um, because the ones that aren't are generally custom PCBs that the manufacturers have tweaked around with to obviously increase efficiency and uh, power delivery and all of that. So it, it, you have to be quite careful when it comes down to reference. But if you, have, if you know you have a reference card and you found that information out, then just a reference block should fit. If you are unsure, just yet again, ask the supplier. It, it takes probably five minutes to send an email like that and at least you've got absolute confirmation it's gonna fit. Um, but apart from that, you're looking for you know compatibility that goes for your specific block. So if it's an EVGA 3080 Ti, you're looking for EVGA 3080 Ti. Now, when it comes to the workings of these blocks, very similar to the CPU, you'll have your water in or coolant, that will come round and now this will hit a jet plate. Now you do find these jet plates in CPUs as well. Um, in the heat killer series, I don't think they actually have a, a jet plate, but the velocity certainly does. Now the jet plate kind of condenses the flow and then basically will spread that down the fins and guide it where it wants it. So the coolant will come in through here, through the jet plate, through the cooling fins. Um, that will carry away all the heat generated by the block, um, well, the GPU and then that will expel that through the outlet. Yet again, making its way around your radiator, eventually being cooled and delivered back to the block. So that is, as promised, the very basics. You can go so much further with this and there is so much more to know, but in all honesty, for getting set up and just buying your first water block, what we've discussed here today is all that is really relevant. Now, if there is, like I said, questions that I haven't quite covered and I probably have missed some stuff, but I'm pretty much sure I've got the, the core of it down. But if there's anything else additional that you need to know, there's no such thing as a stupid question when you're starting out, um, just ask that down below. Um, and if you are an advanced user yourself and you have something to add, kindly put it down in the comments um, just for people to see as this can be a nice little hub of information for the beginners. So yeah, that covers that one. Um, like I said, the series will be moving on component to component. So we're going through radiators, pumps, hoses, fittings, all of that. Um, and then we'll get into assembly of loops and obviously what you can go further from there. You've got your single loop, you can do dual loops and the, the benefit of a dual loop versus, you know, sort of a, a mono system. Distro blocks, the lot. We'll cover the lot eventually. Um, but I'm going to break it up between other videos, but ultimately it'll just this will be named the same series so you can kind of follow it as it, as it goes along. So yeah, if you liked this video, please please do hit that like button as it really does help um, as you know new channels do suffer um, and yeah if this is a series that you're interested in following please do subscribe and turn your notifications as that really does help out as well and yeah once again as always thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one cheers